for those who I don't know, I'm Rabbi Andy Kahn, one of the assistant rabbis at Emmanuel. Um, and I want to once again thank Rabbi Gross Prince for organizing this and putting this together. Um, and we're going to be switching off each week who's leading. Um, and this week is my week because last week was her week. So to begin, um, I think it's always good, especially early in the morning, to remind ourselves of our bodies and to get into our bodies. Um, also, I invite you, if, if you are interested in it or and you have one, you can always wear a tallit in the morning for this. Um, this is a version of morning prayer. It's a version of connecting with the divine that we can do in the morning or however you conceive of what prayer is for. Um, that is what we are doing on these Monday mornings. So if you want to wear a tully, you are welcome to. If you don't, you don't have to. Um, whatever helps you feel that this time is more sacred and set apart. Um, so to begin, let's get into our bodies. So I'm actually going to readjust how I'm sitting so I can listen to my own advice. Um, if you can, put your feet on the ground if you are able. And you can adjust this after we're done. But for now, let's sit in a very kind of upright and, um, and stable position with a stable base of our feet on the ground. Take a big, deep breath breath in and imagine it going from your nostrils all the way up to the top of your head and down to your toes. And then back out slowly from your toes out through your mouth. We're going to do one more of those. And now I'm going to invite you to wiggle your toes and to scrunch your feet so you can start feeling this part of your body. You're becoming more and more aware of each part. So wiggling your toes and scrunching your feet, maybe flexing your calves and moving your feet in a circle so you can really feel your ankles coming alive. And bend your knees back and forth. It may crack a little bit or feel creaky. It's okay. It's 8.30 in the morning so you can feel your knees, you lift your legs up so you can feel your thighs activate. So your entire leg is now activated, you're now conscious of it, you've, you've felt it this morning, maybe even express gratitude for the fact that you are feeling this morning, that you're able to move it all. Now twist your body right and left, Engaging your core a little bit so you can feel your back and your middle. Again, accessing gratitude for whatever movement you can do, whatever level of movement you're capable of this morning. We can shrug our shoulders up and back and forward. Again, it might be real creaky. I can tell you that mine are. Still trying to access gratitude for the fact that they are here and they're listening to me. They're letting me move them. They're letting me stretch them. Now arms out to the side, maybe lean back and forth, really activating the muscles in your, your biceps, your triceps, your forearms as you stretch, actively stretching each direction feeling that stretch all the way through to your fingers. Now this part, be very, very careful with yourself. It's really easy to pull your neck if you move it too quickly this early in the morning. Just gentle forward, gentle to the side and to the back, gentle rolling of the neck.
and maybe even scrunching up your forehead, scrunching up your nose, engaging these very, very fine muscles in our face, feeling grateful for them because they allow us to express ourselves. They are one of the main ways we express ourselves other than language, maybe even more so than language, that these little muscles in our face do all these little weird things, let others understand what we're thinking and feeling. Now we've contacted each part of our body, hopefully feeling inside our body, feeling grateful for what our bodies can do today. Now let us move to our breath. And so this morning, um, I'm going to be walking everyone through a guided meditation based on the Kriyat Shema, the first part of our morning prayer service. Um, other than the morning blessings, which in some ways we just kind of did. The traditional morning blessings are really about um, feeling, activating, and expressing gratitude for all of the little things that we can so easily ignore in the morning, getting up, being awake, being alive, being able to stand up straight, being able to bend down. All of these things are traditional blessings that are said in the, um, the morning liturgy of uh, Jewish practice. And then we move into the, um, the Kriyat Shema. And when people hear the word Shema, they think often they think only of the centerpiece prayer, the Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, uh, which we will get to and we will chant together. But the Kriyat Shema going back to the point in our Jewish um, textual tradition in the Mishnah where it's first mentioned um, that it was actually done in the temple was never done just like that. There are always in the morning, two blessings before, a blessing after, and then uh, Micha Mocha. And it was always connected to Ve'a Hafta. Um, Shema and Ve'a Hafta are always said together. So this morning, um, I'm gonna walk us through a guided meditation uh, on the themes of the morning Kriyat Shema, the first two blessings, Yotzer Or and Ahava Rabbah. Then we will chant the Shema together then I will also lead us through a guided thought process on Ve'a Hafta, then Emet Ve'a Tziv, which is the blessing after uh, the, the reading of Shema and Ve'a Hafta, and then we'll end with Micha Mocha and a little bit of silence. So to begin, in as I'm sure many, most, maybe all of you know, in the morning service or even an evening service, um, the Kriyat Shema begins with a Bachu. Um, I'm not going to ask you to stand and bow and chant the Baruch Hu, but instead we're going to breathe together. The Baruch Hu is a call and response blessing that in and of itself doesn't say very much. It says, blessed is God, blessed is God forever and ever. It's a call and response that doesn't, the content itself isn't what's important. What's important is that it's really the individual leading the prayer, calling to the people who are joining in the prayer, and those people calling back. So what we're going to do instead is simply breathe together so that we can actually enter into this, um, this space of, of prayer from a distance because as we breathe together just and look at each other, so I will, I'll also suggest we keep our eyes open, we actually bond. When you fall into the breathing pattern of someone else, I'm sure you've all experienced this, you bond with that person. So I'm gonna ask that you keep your eyes open. I'm actually gonna um, sit with my legs crossed because that's more comfortable for me. So I'll also suggest you get into whatever uh, position is more comfortable for you that'll allow you to access your imaginative faculty because a lot of this is going to be guided imagery that allow you to be comfortable in that. And I'm just gonna do a little breathe in, breathe out and you can follow along with me. So let's breathe in. And breathe out. And as you breathe in, imagine yourself connecting with all of those breathing in in this moment. Breathe in. Breathe out. 
no matter how far apart, we're accessing the same pool of air, the same elements in the air. This air that we are breathing has been accessed by so many others and will be in the future. It passes through the plants and back to us. Breathe in. And breathe out. Now feel yourself connecting with each other, with me, all in the service of one purpose, and the purpose of connecting with the divine. Breathe in. Breathe out. I'm now going to invite you to close your eyes. And imagine back to time before time, to creation before creation, to as our scripture calls it, tohu vavohu, welter and waste, chaos, darkness, nothingness. The moment before the Big Bang the moment before anything entered into existence. And in this moment, imagine a light shining forth in the darkness, a single light breaking through the tohu vavohu, the welter and waste and shining out. And this light shining out began to order all the chaos, turning it into matter, turning it into water, separating out the darkness from the light, creating a space in which yes and no can exist, which darkness and light, good and evil, and everything in between can exist. And this light came to underlie all aspects of creation. Imagine this light leading to you, leading to your body. This light vibrating at such a frequency that created the cells that make up the very fundamental pieces that join together to become you. And this light never stops shining. This light never goes out. This light continues throughout all of creation. This light leads to Torah. And as you breathe in, Imagine this light, this light from before creation, pervading all of creation, pervading the air you breathe in, this pure sacred light. And as you breathe out, you can imagine this light replacing all of the old air, the old negative feelings, the darkness you held within as you breathe out that darkness, which too is necessary for our growth, for our existence. You can breathe in this ancient sacred light. And out the darkness it replaces. And see in your mind's eye this light pervading all creation, bringing us here, allowing us to persist, allowing us to be conscious, to think, to love, to be grateful. This light, a gift, 
the gift of the universe, the gift of our world. The whole world is filled with this light. Baruch atah Adonai Yotzer HaMeorot. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, creator of the divine light. Now that we are feeling this light pervading all creation, you can also access a piece of it, a particular piece of it, a particular piece of it that is Jewish. The way that God expresses God's love for the Jewish people and has throughout time, which is the Torah. The Torah is not only the five books of Moses. The Torah is not only a scroll held in an ark. The Torah itself tells us that the Torah is within us to do, to say. We inherit the Torah from our ancestors. We inherit this teaching from those who came before us and we hold it within us. And this in and of itself is a miracle. We could be as animals are and not be able to transmit this kind of complex knowledge from generation to generation. But instead we are granted the love of God through this capacity to transmit wisdom and knowledge from generation to generation, building upon each other. And I invite you now to reflect on a piece of wisdom you have inherited from someone before you, someone that you love, who you carry with you in this piece of wisdom, whether it be a saying, a behavior, an approach to the world. What Torah are you carrying with you that you are grateful for today? Blessed are you, Adonai, who has granted your people, Israel, a special connection in love. I now invite you to join me in chanting a piece of our shared Torah the Shema. I'll draw out each world, word, each world, each word, so that you can join in at your level of comfort. If you'd rather just listen, that's totally acceptable too. Shema. Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Kevod Mahuto 
now established the core teaching of the Torah that was transmitted to us in love through the light from the beginning of all time, the oneness of all things, that oneness of all things that we call Adonai, that which was, that which is, and that which will be. And we now turn to thinking about what we do with this knowledge of oneness. As this oneness shows us love through our capacity to learn, we share love for this oneness through all of our actions that reflect that learning. In what ways have you shown this love through your heart, through your internal feelings? Which ways have you allowed this love of this oneness to enter into you in your most core place, your heart. In what ways have you shown this love through your breath, through your speech, through the words you share with others, the voice you bring to the world. How do you use your breath to reflect the love of this oneness? In what ways have you shown this love through external means, through actions, through acting with care, with love, with devotion that reflects your love of the oneness that we are all connected through. And through which ways have you reflected this love through what you have chosen to learn, what you have chosen to devote your time and your mind to? How have you shown this love through your teaching, through your repetition of the things you have learned? This love in the world, outside, to strangers even, to everyone you encounter. And this love in your home. And you're free to fully be yourself with your loved ones or maybe by yourself. How do you show this love and this acknowledgement of oneness when you are all alone? We've now moved through the basic foundation of the Kriyat Shema to understanding what was created to what this does for us what is asked of us because we now have this knowledge. When we take a moment to pause and think on the eternality of these teachings, the way in which the teachings we are reflecting on today have been passed down for thousands of years in various forms, but the content, the intent of these teachings has always remained the same. Reflect on the eternality of this acknowledgement of God's oneness. And we began our meditation with a miracle, the miracle of change, of something out of nothing, of a light piercing through the darkness of order from chaos. And we end with a miracle as well. 
Michamocha, the prayer that we sing at the end of Kriyat Shema, reflects on the miracle of the parting of the Red Sea, which is really just a symbol of liberation, a symbol of the world falling into order for you. Those moments where it seems that everything comes together in a way that is unimaginable, that is more than coincidence. And as we anchor and end our meditation with another brief silence, I invite you to reflect on a time in which this has happened for you, when everything in your life came together at a point that felt too perfect to be coincidence, when everything fell in line in a way that seemed unimaginable. And now that you have brought forward this memory, now that you have presenced the feeling of what it's like to have something like that happen, I invite you to remember that because it happened once, it can happen again. We will all find those moments once again in which everything comes together for us in a way that in retrospect may feel miraculous. And may you throughout this day, as you step into this day, whatever it holds for you, find at least one moment in which you can bring forward that amazement, that wonder, and that gratitude that comes with acknowledging that things need not be as perfect as they are. And things can always turn out miraculously. <laughs>